We all know that the ROG Ally is coming in a few months and it will definitely come to the Philippines. Now, in case you missed our previous and hands-on impressions, you can check out our website and of course, the link is in the description down below. Today, I'll walk you through the handheld devices I have accumulated over the past years and tell you my quick thoughts about them. There's a handheld for every budget that's the point of this video. But I need to tell you that the products I'll be covering range from 4,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos. I would assume that the upcoming ROG Ally will be around the range of 45,000 to 60,000 pesos and I'm pretty sure that such range is not for everyone. Hindi lahat may ganito kalaking pera, so my goal is to show some options within the range that I mentioned. Siyempre, let's start with the Mio Mini Plus. The Mio Mini Plus is a compact and portable handheld console with a built-in Cortex-A7 high-performance processor for a smooth gaming experience. It features a 3.5-inch IPS screen with 640 by 480 pixels and a narrow bezel for a high screen-to-body ratio. The console is compatible with games from multiple platforms and supports online multiplayer mode via Wi-Fi and instant save for all emulators. All right, it's playing right now. <laughs> okay, it also offers customization settings for game collections, uh, background music, uh, key mapping, and a lot more. The Mio Mini Plus supports various RetroArch-based open source emulators for an enjoyable gaming experience, and its portable design allows for easy on-the-go gaming sessions. Now, the only issue that I've got right now is in terms of availability. This one is usually out of stock and I got a little lucky because Timeless Trinket still had stocks available when I inquired. Now, should you want to get one, this is available for 4500 for the basic package. Next, we've got this old but gold Anbernic RG353V. I talked about this a few months ago and this has been my constant buddy before I got the Mio Mini Plus. Now, this one is running on Jellos and a custom Android version. I can choose to boot Jellos so I can run some emulators or a custom Android version so I can sideload some Android APK games or just run emulators that don't run perfectly rather on Jellos. I love the controls on this device, plus its size fits perfectly on my pocket or small bag. It has two thumbsticks, which are very responsive to use. They are not using hall sensors, but I heard that the ones being sold by Gullikit is compatible with this one. I haven't tried it. Please let me know in the comments section down below if you did. Like the Mio Mini Plus, this comes in various colors, but I believe that the only ones available locally being sold by Timeless Trinkets is a black and uh, also white, if I'm not mistaken, for 6,200 pesos for their basic package. Now, next is if I want to run my emulators on a bigger landscape screen, this is what I carry. This is the Anbernic RG503. Now, this powerful handheld console is packed with a Rockchip RK3566 quad-core 64-bit Cortex-A55 CPU that runs up to 1.8 GHz, solving any frame loss issues and giving me a smooth and seamless gaming experience. Now, unlike the Anbernic RG353V and also the Mio Mini Plus, this one is a bigger OLED display. This has a 4.95-inch OLED display, mind you that, no? Now, the RG503 also comes with a 3500 mAh uh, battery that supports up to 8 hours of gameplay and fast charging via USB cable. It also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. You can connect to your uh, favorite games seamlessly. And also, you can even stream your PC games with this one because uh, it has a built-in Moonlight application for you. This one, however, has a 1 gig LPDDR4 RAM, which I think should be enough to let you play up to PSP and Dreamcast games. And uh, before I forget, no, this is also running on Jealous, uh, just like uh, the Anbernic RG353. And as I mentioned earlier, this one is, uh, of course, packing with an OLED display. Pretty cool and very bang for your buck, no? Unfortunately, the RG503 does not have dual OS support unlike the RG353V. Uh, keep this in mind before getting this one. And in terms of price, this is currently being sold for around 7,000 pesos via AliExpress and by resellers here in the country. 
Okay, so now let's move on on the big guns. How can I forget the Steam Deck? At around 25,000 pesos here in the Philippines, this is definitely the best one in the market right now that offers a good price to performance ratio. Now, this is all thanks to the custom chip that Valve and AMD uh, made specifically for the Steam Deck. I can play games like uh, Hogwarts Legacy, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, and Witcher on this device to name a few. The support and interest community of Steam Deck uh, is really huge, especially here in the Philippines, despite the fact that Valve is not officially selling it here in the Philippines. No? The Steam Deck definitely put a dent in the industry and became a catalyst and trendsetter in the handheld space. In fact, even if dumating yung ROG Ally, no, I would not be selling my Steam Deck. So those of you who are asking, bro, bilhin ko na lang Steam Deck mo? Nope, I, I won't sell it. Uh, because uh, there's lots of contents waiting for me when that one arrives, to be honest with you. Now, let's talk about this one. This is the GPD Win 3. It's it's surely a, a dated handheld and may most powerful the data, which uh, recently came out, no? the GPD Win 4. I don't have the money uh, for that and honestly, I would rather wait and use my money to get the more powerful ROG Ally. Now, whether you're traveling, uh, working, or relaxing in the evening, you can enjoy your favorite games anytime and anywhere with the GPD Win 3. Uh, of course, it's GPD Win 4, no? but that one, as I mentioned, is more expensive. It's a 5.5-inch touchscreen, is sunlight readable, no? and boasts 1280 by 720 resolution. It has 400 nit brightness and 268 ppi density. The screen is also protected by Corning's fifth-generation Gorilla Glass with DC dimming, resulting in more vivid colors and reducing grainness or gradiness as well. No? Now, with 65 watts speed, 2.0 fast charge, Charging via Type C, which is located on here, you know, the, the device can uh, fu be fully charged rather in just uh, an, uh, one and a half hours. Depending on usage, the battery can last for up to two to three hours based on my experience. Sometimes one hour lang depends on game that I'm no? Now the keyboard is, as you can see, discreetly hidden in, at the bottom of the screen and has a white backlight. I'm just not really a fan of uh, capacitive keyboards are uh, I'm really more of a, a physical keyboard guy and that is of course the reason why they when they came up with the GPD Win 4 that one has a physical keyboard hidden also underneath the screen I, I, as I mentioned I cannot buy that I don't have the money for that but no this one should be good enough for me this is powered by an Intel Core i7 1165G7 CPU and an Intel Gen 12 Iris Xe graphics providing excellent gaming performance. Another one that I've got right here is the Aya Neo Air Pro. This is powered by 6 cores, 12 threads, AMD Ryzen 5 5560U processor and integrated AMD Radeon graphics which you know, helps provide smooth performance in various games and emulators. It features a 5.5 inch OLED screen with 1920 by 1080 resolution, a little, a little smaller than uh, the one I've got here with the GPD Win uh, 3, but you know, it has better resolution and also 109% NTSC color space coverage delivering excellent image quality and also colored range. The device has a 10,050 mAh battery and supports adjustable TDP from 5 watts to 18 watts uh, with a variety of controller and button configurations available. Now, I can play games like Chronicon at 5 watts on this device so that I can save on battery but I can also crank it up to 18 watts if I want to using this button right here. I can just simply select up the pro mode, which gives me 18 watts of TDP. So I can play games like Cyberpunk and also Everspace 2. And hopefully I'll get to try Jedi Survivor later with this one device, with this device as well. And I hope it runs um, pretty good. You know? On this device. Now it also supports Wi-Fi 6, uh, Bluetooth 5.2, and has two full featured Type-C ports, a TF slot or a micro SD slot rather, and a 3.5 millimeter audio interface. The one I've got here comes with 16 gig of LPDDR4 RAM and 512 gig of SSD. You know? Additionally, the device allows for easy reinstallation of the system OS through a simple button combination. I I'd like to try also Holo ISO here. I cannot because I don't have the time yet to tinker with this one, but hopefully I'll be able to do so in a few days. 
Now that you know, know the options you've got, it all comes down to needs nyo, no, for gaming. While some of you have the money to buy the upcoming ROG Ally or the new ones from INEO, yes, they announced the new ones lately. You, know, you can go check it out the link below. Nasa inyo kung para sa an yung gagamitin yung mga consoles niyo. No? My reasons for buying these ones may be different from yours because I create content about tech and gaming. But there's one thing that we can all relate to. We just love playing games new and old. No? Now, if you enjoyed this video, this is the best time to subscribe. Uh, we produce shorts and full length of videos like this one every week. Uh, your subscription means a lot to small content creators like myself. You can also visit our website, that's gadgetfilipinas.net and our other social media channels. Uh, hindi po kami nagbebenta ng gadgets, ha? so just so you know. No? So, kung may makita kayo na Gadget Pilipinas na nagbebenta ng gadgets, hindi po kami yun. So, this has been GN guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!